Welcome to Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Today we have Deo Katunga. What up? What fools? up? <laughs> so glad you're here. So glad to have you. Glad to be here for sure. <laughs> oh, man, man, so good. I um, we've been we've been catching up about lockdown uh, growth and uh, and like uh, what's the what's the term when you um you you get rid of things that aren't serving you? <laughs> shed shed the badness. Shedding the badness. <laughs> Changing the coat. That's it. That's it. And um, like you're 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 happy in love, and like you're just the most stable young dude ever. Right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so not. <laughs> I'm surfing every second. But you've got like a you you have a good romantic relationship, and it's been going for quite a while, right? Two years now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quite a while. That's it's, quite a while. I don't. I don't know. It feels like. I've only known you when you've a bit like we've known each other for longer than that, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess I started doing comedy 2019. Okay. Ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in 2018, mm-hmm. and so it's 2021. So I guess two years. Something like this. Yeah. Something like that. All right. And is your relationship exclusive? Yeah, yeah. I don't have another person. Yeah. So it's monogamous. You're both yeah, yeah, monogamous. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you like test that out, or was it just like a, like just natural agreement? I guess we kind of started off doing a, the one person thing. And one time I asked her, like, how open do you want to be in this relationship? Mm-hmm. Meaning how open with each other do you want to be in this relationship, <laughs> not with like other people. Yeah. And then she was like, uh, well, if you want to see other people, I guess I'm cool with that. Uh, and we were talking about that situation, like, uh, I guess like a week ago. And then I was like, remember when you told me that shit? Da, 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 da. Uh, and then uh, she was like, yeah, uh, I was thinking that you're really nice and I don't I didn't really care what happens as long as we're together somehow. Mm. And I was like, that's so sweet. <laughs> you know, she's like, now I like uh, that you don't see nobody. <laughs> and I was like, it's all good. I was never going to see nobody anyway. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, I just I'm just not that type of person. Like how like you were really just asking, like, how much honesty do you want? <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> like, like, do you do you want me to leave the door open when I go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Can I poop in front of you, please? Can like can we save water and only flush like once a once day? Once a day. <laughs> and you live together. You've lived together for almost since the beginning. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like that for wild. me, that's like red flag. Like that's a crazy relationship kind these of, days because yeah. I'm old, right? I'm old, so that's a You think you're old. I don't think you're old. Oh, Dave, say that again. Say it again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> you're not old, Anna. <laughs> you're not old at all. How young am I? Tell me how young you are you. You seem like twenty two. <laughs> what because i keep making horrible decisions <laughs> <laughs> i don't know your decisions but so far with this place it seems like you're making good decisions yeah so today we are recording from my new apartment oh shit, oh, shit. i have a loft bed i am so excited about this hawk bed loft bed situation mm. Do you know how much they squeak <laughs> oh my god i'm excited to test it um, <laughs> And I'm optimistic about testing it because uh, on the day that I'd moved out the night before, um, I hooked up with a, a total like a friend of a friend. Like, you know, all the bars opened for the first time outside in Berlin and I drank and boom, I got laid. Like, you ain't wasting no time. I didn't like, waste what? It, like, it has been open since three hours. I got to be out of here. It was the most <laughs> successful night I've ever had in so long. And it's crazy. Like, I wanted to, I want to not put it down to alcohol, but if I hadn't been drinking and eating space cake, then I probably wouldn't have gone to this fuckboy's house who has been messaging me for like a year to, to catch up. Is that up. the person that's messaging no. you now? Okay. No. This guy messaged me. He lived, um, he lives around the corner from my uh, old apartment that I just moved out of. And yeah, I lived, would live as neighbors for two and a half years and I'd never gone to his house. He would frequently be like, hey, what are you doing? Want to come over? Want to like, I've got Do coke. Um, I got coke. Yeah. Is that how people flirt these days? Yep. I got I'm coke. I'm so out of it, dude. I'll share my drugs with you. It's like, oh, he's being generous today. <laughs> <laughs> coke is expensive. <laughs> yeah. Because it used to be like, yo, I got it? speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, he actually doesn't. Yeah, he, he's got some level of, uh, he's got some standards, but. <laughs> <laughs> he was, you take coke, not speed, you got standards, man. <laughs> right? But he, um, no, it used to be like, you know, oh, do you want to come around? Do you want to, you know, you want to, you want to cuddle? And then, and then I could see he was getting more and more um, 
desperate because mm. he'd be like oh like i've got some nice whiskey do you want to come over for a drink and then like the week later he'd be like i've got whis- whiskey and and coke like co- mm. cocaine like do you want to and i was like oh he's sharing his drugs <laughs> like he really wants me to come over. <laughs> he's like i have a dinner whiskey and cocaine yeah and he I also invited me to dinner you as want well some music <laughs> yeah. like, come on what else do you need <laughs> <laughs> and i just i just kept like uh not engaging because friends were like anna do not go back to this guy. He was the guy that I was seeing when I first moved to Berlin. Oh. He's this film director. He, um, so there's a, there's history. There's history there. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, That's different. I've got a joke actually, you know, the joke about, um, <laughs> that I almost died from sucking, sucking dick dude. oh that's this guy <laughs> it's this guy no way with the cyst thing no what was well, it's it my cyst oh uh, yeah, yeah his yeah. dick yeah oh shit and yeah. what did he say at the end of this uh at the end of what when when this perspired uh he he was he said he would come to the hospital with me and i'm like no you won't and um he didn't he didn't and then okay. he didn't even text me to see how i was going <laughs> okay uh yeah yeah so basically for the for those who don't have any idea what i'm talking about i have a joke but it's just a true story like most of my jokes where um i uh i had an abscess in my throat but i didn't know about it and uh this this fuck boy whose house i was at on friday um he he booty called me he came over and like uh i could hardly talk and um he booty called me when I was I was searching for the house doctor to come visit. Basically, the house doctor was able to come like in five hours. So we had sex in the meantime and then slept. And then the house doctor came and we like I saw this guy in the kitchen and he checked my throat and called an ambulance immediately. And I was like, why? why? He was like, well, there's an abscess in your throat. And if it bursts the wrong way, it'll poison your brain and you'll, you die. Could, you'll die. Yeah. And um, yeah. And so the joke is about that, but it's it's just like it's crazy, like because this yeah this this fuck boy had wanted me to give him a, a blowjob, and if I had done that, I could have burst the abscess and, and died. died. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Dude. By the way, this guy doesn't know that I have that joke about him. So oh, he doesn't. No, he has no idea that you're saying this because no. you haven't seen him since. Yeah, I actually hadn't seen like I'd seen him by accident on the train once or twice mm. where he'd been like, oh, yeah, I see you're doing. Oh, no. And he came to a show at Pora Party once mm. um, before when we were doing the the very first Berlin New Stand Up Award. Mm. He came and I told him that I was in this competition. He's like, oh, you're going to win. And I was like, dude, I didn't make it through the heats. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, hey, that contest is another thing. <laughs> I ain't even going right? to go into Oh, it. my God, that contest. But yeah, so he actually has seen me do comedy, but he hasn't seen me do that bit. Mm. Anyway. Um, so, uh, I have resisted his, um, kind of like invitations Cold. for the last year because, uh, yeah, like, oh, but you met him mm. and you went to this dude's place. I went to this dude's place on oh, Friday night after hanging out. it sounded out. like that's the person that, that you're texting. No, no, no. I went to his house and there was like a little party oh, and, uh, shit. and I and he took was like, him. you want the Coke now? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they were the smallest lines, dude. <laughs> For real? <laughs> cheapskate she's like let me split this line into maybe she won't recognize dude it was well there were quite a she few had people a sk- there space cake a minute ago yeah yeah like i was i was i was flying um but but it was only because of alcohol that like i was on my way home after hanging out with a bunch of comedians on friday night and then being in girl at a park and then i was in girl at a park and i'm like what am i doing in a park i'm 34 years old and uh, time to go home i'm moving house the next day you know mm. and then i get this message from oh, this was yesterday this was no Saturday, yeah Saturday morning Friday. basically. Okay, gotcha. So at one a.m., um, fuck boy messages me or like you know uh, Coke boy. Mm. That's what Dragos calls him Coke, Coke boy. Because <laughs> he's no, always actually he calls him Coke. Coke dick. Coke dick. <laughs> Coke dick. <laughs> That's hilarious. And um, and he messages me. It's one a.m. Mm. Wh- whiskey. Okay. Whiskey dick. Whiskey dick is one thing. Yeah. What is Coke dick? Coke dick. It can super go either active. way. It can go either way. It can be not active or it can be super super active. Active. Yeah. I've never taken cocaine, so I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. It can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. But basically, the name coke dick is like if I go that get go to that dick, there will be coke involved. And yeah, uh, yeah obviously. Dragos is, the Dragos is always like, you know, do you want to go down that spiral? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not an addict, but it is true. It's like this whole world of kind of. Yeah, how much do I want to engage? Mm-hmm. But anyway, so it was only because of alcohol, really, that when he texted me on uh, on Friday night, that I was like, "Fuck it, let's." Let me go. He's like, you know, there's some people over, and so I arrived, and there were yeah, there were maybe like uh, seven people, uh, super nice, playing records. Someone made me a drink, you know, lines getting passed around, good chats. Seven people. I got left. a few. I got a few new followers on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. 
<laughs> Let's go. Always an opportunity to drunk sell Anna, fucking <laughs> self promotion queen, Let's man. It's go. insane. So, but would you say that uh, alcohol helps or hurts? Helps uh, <laughs> with some opportunities. Mind you, do not remember getting there. Like, I do not. I also like. I went home before I went to this guy's house, and when I was at this guy's house afterwards. I was looking for my menstrual cup and I was like, where did it, like, has my body swallowed it forever? Like, I, and then I, it took me like two times going to the bathroom and I was like, oh, I went home and to I took my out. menstrual cup out. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Anyway, uh, great little party. But <laughs> so I, you're like, I know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Let me just take this out and do what it has to do. Yeah, exactly. He's on coke anyway. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how prepared was I? And, um, and so yeah, if, and if i vibed is... i vibed with this guy there quite a lot and ended up leaving coke dick's house with another guy oh, with another guy yeah and going home going home with this with guy. another dude yeah. in front of coke dude yeah. and coke dude knows yeah. there's, there's no way he <laughs> doesn't know yeah okay uh which which day were you in your cycle um i was i'm well i don't know what day uh so if bleeding is day one when you start bleeding this day one i would say i'm like i was like day six so pretty much like August. almost at the end yeah at the end at okay, the okay. End, yeah, at the end or just squirts of blood bleep, bleep. just like a little <laughs> bit of like bleep, bleep, like a <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so it was fine like i don't i don't take the cup yeah. out unless like yeah it had been fine for a couple of days so was it good um in the i end? don't really rem- like remember but the cuddles in the morning were nice were really nice okay. and cute and like like yeah uh he was he's very funny and mm. he's like this uh, english guy um which is yeah but he's uh, great tattoos <laughs> <laughs> that's also a thing i mean if you see somebody with shitty tattoos obviously he's doing some type of weird choices yeah well he's got some shitty tattoos in his opinion but shitty like tattoos are cool also though so well. i don't know <laughs> but they need to be shitty in the right way right they do need to be <laughs> shitty in the right way exactly um but just like really nice vibe really nice vibe i haven't really connected with someone so instantly and like alcohol helps for sure mm. but there was also like funny in the morning like uh just like nice nice like nice talks. jokey cuddle affection but like not mm. yeah anyway and then like uh he made sure i had his number and then like we were texting all yesterday he was like maybe you should just come to my house after you finish moving house like he i brought him to my home when my room looked like i was a heroin addict <laughs> like, my, like everything mess up, everything is a mess <laughs> like it was such a boss move i feel like how, bringing... do, her- how do heroin addicts rooms look like empty and okay. like living out of boxes i assume okay i don't know on a mattress yeah on a mattress like i've never so had like a, a skateboarder like a sk- <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. mattress in the kitchen <laughs> but like woke up and it was like oh my god like my room is just a mess like you know I, so um in my room right now where we're recording there's boxes around but this is still better than what he he came to and, okay. and so yeah but yeah anyway my the mover came at um the guy that to help me move came at 1 p.m my best friend came at 12 p.m i uh left the house to get breakfast with this guy at 11 <laughs> so like i was cutting it close oh, so you but, went at 11 came back at 12 uh no like walked out with him and i got like a burek and he like walked home and that oh, was at 11 and then oh, i got geez. home i gave myself 45 minutes to like pack the last things which was really cutting it close um but yeah he kept te- like he, we texted during the day and stuff and like do you text is this the guy that you want to text the now guy. Yeah, feel yeah. free to text man no okay <laughs> All right. So like it's it's super cute. He's like asking me how I'm feeling mm. and how my new place is looking and that he's still feeling rubbish from Friday, which is a good sign because that means he doesn't party like that usually. He doesn't is not a usual partier. Exactly. Or maybe that's what he wants you to think. Probably. But you he's know. like I'm feeling fine, but let me say I feel bad because that's But I'm down with protocol. that. <laughs> I'm really down with that. <laughs> that's just protocol. Protocol. No, I feel like um like hey i'm feeling see, great see. <laughs> no i feel weird um, writing the message whilst we're recording you can write it and i can talk some random shit hello people <laughs> <laughs> no i'm gonna i'm gonna message him back in oh he's so cute though he's like ask see i don't and that's the thing like when a guy is genuinely interested leave him wait i'm gonna tell you that <laughs> but it's like but it's like he it's like is it a red flag that he wants to see me again the next day like is how is it... that a red flag <laughs> See, this is how damaged I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. To me, if if a person wants to see, or personally, how I see things is, if a person wants to see you, or you want to see a person, mm. you try and engage that. And if 
they respond with like, nah, I don't really want to see you today. Or like they kind of like ghost or something mm. and just leave it. But mm. if they say like, yeah, sure, let's meet. Then you just meet the person and then you do what I do and then you continue. And then if they want to meet again and you're like, okay, if you feel like you want to meet mm. the person, go meet the person. Mm. Live your live your happy moments. And yeah. when they leave, they leave. It is what it is. Yeah. I suppose it's just like when someone wants to see you so soon after, like I know friends would be like, oh God, no, like we'd only see each other. Like I'd only see a new, a new lover, like maximum twice a week you know like mm, things like just that just broken society right there. <laughs> yeah it's true Straight i'm just not up. used to yeah i'm not used to someone like immediately being like hey like what's up what's up tonight like mm. you wanna wanna hang it's like oh <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> it feels fun okay yeah but then exciting. then again it's like if you have a if you have a protocol for everything like oh i mm. if a new lover comes i wait uh, three days to do then you're mathematically <sighs> like trying to do stuff with like people and relationships and th yeah. there's no math in that no. you know there's more chemistry if anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so you gotta feel it out there's no way to feel it out with math right <laughs> you know what i mean right exactly what the like, calculates their dates yeah well <laughs> actually weird. okay now i'm so glad you bring this up because when i was in barcelona with shahak and dragos um i had a few moments like i went through i ovulated and started my period when i was with them right so emotional it was a <laughs> <laughs> yes hello emotions <laughs> i was a mess and our biggest show we did a show where it was like a you know socially distanced packed theater uh so it was like 85 people in there <laughs> and like like a proper theater stage Damn. and how big was it? i was a mess what was what? how big was the stage like did you have to pace a bunch i could have but i i i didn't because i was feeling very uh not in control that night mm. i like i i wanted to pace more i did a bit i would have let like had I done that show more than once, I probably would have used the stage space more and would have enjoyed would have it. Figured out where to move. Probably. Yeah, okay, and had gotcha. I hosted the show, like that would have been way more fun. Like I would have loved to <laughs> be lot more loose. Totally right. I oh, man, but um, but what was really intense about the show was that um, okay, firstly biggest show secondly um i did this ad for an ethical porn company Asties. i did this comedian reaction video and uh the the, the camera person the person who filmed it said i should um send in a video to apply to be the face of the company oh wow mm. that's very nice yeah so to be like the the non um, porn star person who interviews porn stars who like creates um, who's the, the the YouTube face basically yeah, yeah, for the you. porn company and um, and so I sent in this video and then when I was in um, Barcelona that camera person um, said hey the uh, some of my colleagues from the company are in Barcelona they'd like to come to your show oh, they were the colleagues they were the wait they were the co-founders so the founders of this fucking company come to my show and they see me at the now there were a few other elements to it um there were only two females on the lineup that happens right all the time so the lineup was like maybe eight eight comedians two females and the way that the um they did the uh the lineup. order the lineup mm -hmm. thank you um they put the two female comedians one after the other first and second first half first and second first half yeah did you open no okay well at least that Sure, I would like to like if I was opening, I would have done a, a different kind of set. I think mm. that like yes, it's still like just burn me fine. Mm. But like, why would you put both female comedians in, in the, the first, first half, half, one after the other? Fuck That's you! Crazy, it's dude. like, what are you trying to get us out of the way? Like somehow, oh dude, and then and just like saving it, just saving like men for the last half. It's like ew, ew. Like just the <laughs> message that that puts out there is. You know, maybe it has no like uh, back text behind it. I agree. Hopefully, I agree with you, and I don't think it did, but it just lacked the awareness of how that feels for the female comedians. I mm. think, and it was also like, dude, female comedians typically have quite dark material because if you come from an if you're an oppressed people, <laughs> then usually you have quite dark, dark material. material. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I try to exactly heal the wounds. <laughs> and women's like female comics are usually way more way darker because they're they've had to fight for their voice, right? And oftentimes I feel like they're also way darker because people don't react to silly humor from ladies for some fucking reason. Yeah, right. And I think that's trash. That is trash. That's <laughs> straight up trash. Like forcing people to be like somehow not angry, but uh, like do scary shit yeah. just because another way is not really working. That's yeah. very stupid. Yeah. Like silly. Yeah. How many like just silly like um, 
I'm trying to think of a good example of a silly comedian like Billy. What's the what's the little short fat guy from the UK with the long hair who was in Black Books? Um, buh, 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 buh. He's like a really silly comedian. But like, yeah, how many like just really silly female comedians are there? Yeah, doing goofy, goofy shit. Goofy, goofy shit. Like, um, 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 um God, I can't remember any names right now. Same. Um, what's her name? Crazy, crazy woman, blonde hair from the states, older. Uh, Mary Maria Bamford, oh. but she's super smart and she's mm. super complex in the in the comedy she creates. But she's very silly. Mm. But all of her silliness is um, is kind of underlined with like a is you know on this on this base layer of like hardcore social commentary and and and, yeah, and yeah, feminism yeah. as well, like laughing at the fucked up position that women are in. But yeah, there's no goofy goofy female comedians. You're it's right. kind of fucked, man. Just yeah but anyway so this lineup so there was that yeah so there was <laughs> so i got in there and by the time i got in there this other male comedian had pissed me off and uh just with his narcissism and then i get in there and i'm like guys the lineup sucks like we need to change it please can we change it what's this i'm taking a photo but don't pay attention just okay. do your thing um so yeah and so the lineup pissed me off then um yeah then i had these two like porn co porn company co-founders in the audience no pressure oh and when i spoke to these guys you know what they said the guy was like oh oh i'm getting nervous for you do you need to go and prepare because comedy is hard and it was like oh jesus let me do my job here yeah. like oh my god don't say that and i think had it not been after i hadn't done comedy in seven months and if it had been a comment like that had been made to me during normal comedy times just i would carry that shit yeah i would just this is like shit happens way easier yeah like it wouldn't affect me but like you know this was my like i'd just been you know shaking off the the, the cobwebs yeah. fuck and you're telling me that you're nervous for me fuck you so yeah. like i was super emotional And then when I was on stage, I um I totally forgot like like I planned to do stuff, and then I just went in a different direction, and my set ended up being like uh like serial killing um uh what was it serial killing suicide and dying alone like they were the main bits that I did. Did it hit though? Parts hit, but like I, the first half was really tough. Like everyone in the first half struggled. Mm. I like. I hit with certain people for sure, and but it wasn't like a rolling laughter through the audience. Okay, good. Yeah, that like it wasn't as good as you wanted it to no be. No way, so to speak. no way. Like a few okay. of my bits like really got them and really got big reactions, but then like overall, I wouldn't say it was a good set. Like, so what did they say in the end? Uh, the co the co founders of the porn company, uh, they wanted to hang out and they wanted to hang out like quite a few times when I was in Barcelona. We did go hung out. We hung out one day. They took me to a cemetery, which was cool. I'd never been to a Spanish cemetery. They they do it vertically, man. It's like walls and like vertically. Crazy. Yeah, really crazy. I just went to a cemetery uh, here recently. Why are we talking about cemeteries? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to a cemetery recently on mushrooms. Ooh. Yeah. Cemeteries <laughs> are so cool, though. So they look kind of nice. I can't lie. <laughs> I think they're really cool. I haven't been to one in, in Berlin. Mm. There's uh, around where I live, for some reason, there's like four. I'm lying. I used to live next to a cemetery on, um, on Hermannstrasse. And mm. one night... Um, my boyfriend at the time noticed all these candles in the cemetery and we didn't realize it was the, like, it's like the day of the dead or something, um, mm. all saints day. Mm. And they put all these, ca and like, we walked through and it was like being in a studio Ghibli film. Like it was so beautiful. Did you and go magical. through the cemetery? Yeah. At night? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. High as fuck. That's danger zone. <laughs> For the mentality, personally, I don't know, because I believe in ghosts and shit like this, because I've had things happen to me that have no explanation. Oh. So when I go to a cemetery, I'm always like, hmm, hmm. Why did I go there on mushrooms? Don't ask me. Uh, and it was in the rain too, so it was like super dark and like it was interesting. It was very <gasps> this interesting. This is super interesting. <laughs> it was this very, is very, very crazy. Super yeah. interesting. And somehow there was uh, there was candles around some of the graves. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like somebody went to give flowers and candles. Mm -hmm. The graves were really well kept and all of that stuff. And it was raining like hard, but the candles were still on. And I don't understand how that shit works. And they were like flamey, flamey candles. They were proper candles, yeah. They were proper good candles because that's what, like it was. It was first. It was raining. Second, it was like almost at the end of the day, so it was like dark, dark. It was like getting like super, super, super dark. It's almost yeah. before it's black. Yeah. And you could see in the rain, you could see the flames like still being on. That's you know. How is that possible? I don't know. It was very. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious about you saying that you um you believe in like yeah I I also like believe in ghosts like I I know people who are um 
like people that I deeply respect, like my stepfather, mm. super uh, rational dude. Like he, he super smart, s- rational, uh, critical, you know, mm. in like all the positive ways. Yeah. He has had some crazy ghost experiences. Inter- yeah. 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 Same and here, man. <laughs> and I have had, I've had only one of my own, um, which I'll tell you about, but I'm curious about yours. Like, do you want to do you want to talk about it? About or? ghost experiences? Yeah. From from sex thing to ghost experiences. Well, it's adults. It's adults only. It's, it's adults only. Hell yeah. I don't yeah. know if you want to talk about it. If you don't. Yeah. No. I mean, I got really no problem speaking about these things because yeah. I do. At one point, it's like I'm not trying to prove nothing to nobody. I know what I experienced. I know yeah. what happened to me, yeah. and uh, like the only way that I would like to also explain it to myself is if something actually did happen. Yeah. Also, for the for my own peace of mind, you know. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I'm, I'm like, so excited! Like, tell like me, tell I, me, tell I, me. When I was so when I was a kid, I would used to always see uh, people on the streets, and they would look slightly different than normal people. I didn't mm-hmm. like pay attention to it. It was like okay, just whatever people, you know. I'm a kid. I don't know jack shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Until one day, I was uh, going back from from school and. My school, you from my school to my house, I passed this like really tall building. This is just basic tall building, whatever. Uh-huh. And uh, I saw one of these like whatever slightly strange looking people, uh-huh. and they were on the on, almost on the highest left balcony, left or right? How do I? It's right. Anyway, highest left uh, right balcony mm-hmm. on the top of the building. Uh-huh. And I'm just like walking around looking at stuff, you know, like a kid would. Yeah. And I see this guy on the top balcony, and he jumps. And at this point, I'm thinking, like, I'm seeing suicide, right? Yes. So this person jumps off of the building and, like, splashes on, like, really gets, like, messed up on the ground. And I was like, and, and I'm like, at this point, I'm like, something like six or five five or six or something. And I'm I'm tripping out, you know? I'm like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? And then the person just got up and climbed back up to the same place where he jumped from. And jumped again. No. And he did that a couple times. And I was like, okay, this is this is weird now, you know? I've I've been a kid that had an overactive imagination since I was or whatever. I'm super sensitive to things. I'm a sensitive soul. Whatever. And Whoa. I really felt like something strange. So I went back to my dad and I explained to him like what happened, right? Um and I told him, Yeah, there's like more of these things that just like walk around. And they seem like normal people, but they're ever so slightly different with yeah. some stuff. Like their clothes are maybe too old. Or, uh-huh. You know, but you think they're like homeless people or something like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like oldish clothes, whatever. And I told him like what happened with the guy that jumped from the from the thing. And he told me that he had a colleague when he was in um, when he was in uh, high not high school. And because he went to university in Bulgaria, mm-hmm. my dad, black dude, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he went to university in Bulgaria and he told me that he had a colleague a girl colleague that married this guy and that lived in this apartment that I pointed to because yeah. I took my dad. He was like, what happened? Took me yeah. out and I pointed like which window the guy was jumping uh-huh. from, like the balcony. And my dad told me that the person that he was studying with mm-hmm. had a husband mm-hmm. and he jumped from there and committed Whoa. suicide. Whoa. That's a that's a that's a very solid ghost story. You know what I like mean? Experience. Yeah, story seems to imply a lack of truth in it. No, a ghost experience like, somehow. And that's so interesting. This idea of the this ghost doing again and again this this moment. Yeah, and I was I was really scared because the bom- the moment that my dad told me that somebody actually did that shit at one point in time. Yeah, from that. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is that I, I researched a bunch into this thing. Mm. And you, as a, as, a, as a kid, if you have an overactive imagination, which I did, because there was like a lot of things happening in our house. I was being slightly disbalanced. We were getting kicked out. They were pushing the house on top of our it was It's a long thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bulgaria, weird place to be as a black guy, regardless. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of things happening, and then we got tested if we were crazy or not. We got IQ tests, about a bunch of these things. I'm not crazy. Got good IQ. <laughs> solid motherfucking person. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm fucking here. I'm not insane. I got a job. I work at a testing station. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Damn, man. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Um, dude. You got tested. When did you get tested? <laughs> for craziness when i was a kid wow when i was a kid i got tested multiple times about a bunch of stuff because i was explaining to my dad and to 
I'm a talkative person. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, at some point, you learn like, okay, there's maybe some things I should just keep to myself. You know. I get. Yeah. Because not everybody's gonna understand. Not everybody's gonna. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, I and it's all about um who you give that stuff to, mm. right? Um, because yeah, like there will be people that will sympathize or you know try to understand even if they haven't experienced it themselves. Yeah. You know? Um, and there's people who are like, ah bullshit. Yeah, and people yeah. who will then you know judge you or or treat you differently. Mm. Um, I've never actually seen um seen a ghost, but I um. I had an experience where I felt Movement. like I was I was I was emotionally moved quite extremely. I um I had this horrible holiday with an ex boy like a boyfriend and now an ex boyfriend. The guy on the picture? No, that's my best friend. I've got a mug. Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday, Anuzi. <laughs> he made a mug for you. He made a mug for me. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's my best friend Uzi. Hmm. And my nickname is Anuzi. His is Anuzi. Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's super That's nice. Can you tell on these? Uh, so there's two photos on this mug. And uh, we've swapped shirts in them. We were at a oh. bar and we swapped shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the bar. Oh, yeah, I can table. see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sorry to disrupt from No, you. no, no. Um, but I was... Um, so I had this horrible Italian boyfriend. Uh, it was our one-year anniversary. He thought it would be a good idea f- to give us a surprise trip to Tasmania. Okay. By surprise trip, I finished like a double... Like three days in a row double shift um, working like, you know, 12-hour days. And uh, on the on the last day, he was like, so we're going to, so happy anniversary. We're going to go to Tasmania tomorrow morning. Flight is at 6 a.m. It was like, oh, good. I don't even get to sleep and recover from, <laughs> from my... the dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, that's cool. We went straight to Mona, which is this amazing gallery in Tasmania. It's like very, very cool, progressive, crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, we had this horrible, horrible trip. The, the night after the gallery, uh, he got to the point where we were yelling at each other on the street. He called me the whore of my family. Um, <gasps> on also, your anniversary on in our, Tasmania? Yep. Um, the Once look- again, this is not you. This is his <laughs> own weirdness. <laughs> right. I know. I've done a lot of work on that, but it was a very violent relationship and... Um, yeah, like just very aggressive verbally. And then he pushed me sometimes and he kind of like, you know, there's some other stuff. But on this trip, anyway. That's not Tattoo Guy, no? No, no, no. no. Okay. That's, that's Colombian. This guy that I'm talking about is Italian. Okay, easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, Italian was before Colombian. And we were in Hobart that day and then we had to drive up because our return flight was from a different city. He mm. hadn't booked any accommodation. So we had to like find a place to sleep. Anyway. We ended up having this long, long drive going to the the city that we were flying out of, uh, eventually finding somewhere we could sleep. I hadn't eaten for like 10 hours. I was ravenous. We get to a pub. I'm like, great, let's eat. And then as I'm ordering a beer, he comes and he's like, there's a ghost tour. There's a ghost tour. Wait, let's go on the ghost tour of Launceston. And I was like, yeah, cool. That sounds good. When does it leave? He's like, we have to go now. Now. So no food. No food. Okay. And I was like okay you're at the edge of your stuff (laughs) it's really not okay and uh and so we go on this ghost tour and i make friends with everybody on the tour you know (laughs) as one does yeah and getting as far away from his possible anyway we're going on this ghost tour and we eventually um get to this um stables and like we've seen lots of different sort of stories and parts Mm -hmm. of the town we get to this stables where they used to keep the horses and um, we're standing at the front and it's like the scariest place. You know, the, the, the tour guide has already said, like, it's the sc- I'm saving this one f- for last. It's the scariest place. Mm. And we stand at the front and he tells the story. He's He doesn't even tell the story yet. He says, look, we're going to go in here. Something very bad happened in here. Um, uh, but I'll tell you what happened once we get inside. Mm. And I just started shaking and crying and I couldn't go in there like i couldn't like i was like i can't go in there I just energetically started, it was just shut down energetically i was i had i i don't know what happened but something just hit me and i was shaking and crying and terrified <laughs> so weird because i'd just been like jovial anna talking yeah. to these people going to these places you know mm. yeah, goes well, whatever and um and this boyfriend was like no you have to come inside she was forcing you and i was like dude i don't want to i can't i, I can't I he's feel like, like it, no, yeah, yeah he, he, and he was like no no Come inside, Anna. Like, uh, yeah. Anyway, I always want to talk in Italian because he's... Anyway, and I was like, 
I was like, come. And so I fucking went in there. And then the story was about a woman who was murdered by her, her husband. Oh, uh, so that, okay. There was some weird energy transference, something in the ground there. This, yeah, this woman had been murdered by her, her partner. And mm. yeah, I don't you know. know what, like, You know what they say about, uh, okay. So some ghost stories, mm. um, oftentimes have a connection between the person that's experiencing the ghost and whatever the ghost experienced themselves. Yeah. So energetically within any situation, the, uh, to me, energy is some type of vibration, right? Yeah. So if you vibe, oh, sorry. If you vibe with someone, you connect more or less, you feel their energy. You kind yeah. of cool. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, energy lingers as well though. Yeah. So you have spirits that linger energetically around certain places, whatever happened to them energetically you can kind of pick up on this if you are on the same wavelength. Yeah. So if you felt some type of danger from your boyfriend, if you if he pushed you around and so on and so forth, you felt so many of these like aggression from the person that was supposed to be close to you, which is the same thing that this lady felt. Mm -hmm. Probably before she entered this place, she might have known what is going to happen to her. Mm -hmm. Hence you feeling that you don't want to go in yeah 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 exactly you know what i mean exactly yeah she was her her husband so she started um she got married because of some family thing um uh but she actually had a lover and uh and the 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 husband that she got married to found these letters that he she had written and mm -hmm. he had written or just he had written maybe she mm -hmm. hadn't yeah and um and he told her to meet him in the he told her to meet him in the stables and then he murdered her there in the stables in the stables see that's the thing so she knew what was going on she right knew. before she yeah. goes in yeah and that's why you yeah. felt that way because yeah. you basically at that point were energetically and vib vibrating the same way that she was before she entered this place that's why you yeah so yeah. that's legit shit it's legit shit that's yeah. what i'm telling yeah. you man yeah, yeah. these it things was... do happen it, no, for, totally totally and uh, there was no the thing i was in such a good mood right like i wasn't like i was finally connecting with people and having like mm, mm. you know and i was i was you know and i was having space from marco mm. i was in this really like i wasn't in a place where i was focusing on my pain and my fear of my partner that's not where i was yeah but yeah, yeah. standing in that place It was like shaking, crying, like uncontrollable. It was so creepy how I was affected that it was like, this is a ghost thing. This mm. is a ghost thing. <laughs> and the fact that I'd even been resistant to going on this ghost mm. tour and then I'm the one that has this crazy experience mm. was insane. And yeah, we got back from, um, we got back to Launceston, like back to Melbourne the next day. And within a month, um, yeah, I, uh, within a month I, I, I left him. It just got crazier and crazier. And my stepdad, even he was like, you, he would never give advice around my relationships and what I should do. Mm -hmm. But when he heard about, like I told him a bit about some of the kind of violent Stuff. vibes and mm -hmm. he was like, and you need to leave him. You Skip need to. That shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So ghost stuff. Yeah. And have you seen anything as an adult? Like, uh, I've seen a bunch of things, but the, They always, because th th these things started happening to me when I was a kid, and my dad told me to not be afraid of them yeah. in any way. But yeah. as a kid, when you see stuff like, because it kept happening with, uh, I'm not going to tell you all the stories, because yeah. there's a bunch. Yeah. That's why I'm like so sure that this thing is, is a thing, because yeah. these things happen to me, and I understand like energetically, like histories about certain places that I've never been to. Yeah. And then I read up the history, and it's exactly what I already know. Yeah, wow. And it's it's not possible because they say okay mm -hmm. if you feel if you experience as a kid some type of ghost stuff, mm -hmm. oftentimes some kids have been told like stories uh, from their parents, mm -hmm. and then with their imagination they kind of visualize the 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 the, the story. Yeah. But my dad, th this hap this does happen. But my dad never told me, and he he knows that's why he was like. Because my dad is African. He is connected to the spiritual motherfucking shit. He knows all of this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He never told me the story about the guy that committed suicide before yeah. I've seen this shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. After I've seen this shit, then he told me about these things, you yeah. know? And then he told me that our family in general has... Because um, you have people that are more sensitive to the... Let's say... Let's call it a force or yeah. whatever. Anything that's around us energetically. Yeah. There's some people that are more slightly more tapped into it. Everybody has the capability to be tapped into it yeah. if they allow themselves to. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's just what it is. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, totally. And some people are just 
uh, more easily connected to it, right? Yeah. And as a kid, I was one of these people that are more easily connected to it. So I would see all of these things and I would experience mm. all of these things and mood switches here and there f- for no reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the good thing is that my parents were always there to explain and to, you yeah. know, and to take care and to Sup- understand yeah. and to support and to say, this is not scary. This is not that you can deal with this. And you're not crazy. This is yeah. actually just life life, and you're um, open to it and you're receiving things, these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My mom always, um, so uh, Some another joke. Some people this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or like, no, no, shame they, you and yeah. or, or say that you. Stop speaking crazy shit. Exactly. Da, 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 da. Gaslight you, say that it's not true. It's not happening. Yeah. My, um, so I've also got a bit. You're imagining. A, you're imagining. Yeah. My, my, my mom thinks that I have a connection to the. The other world, you know, the other world because I was a twin and mm. my twin died. And actually recently I, um, I've, I've often had a thing, I only really noticed it in the last, uh, say four years or five years, but I often think there's, um, there's an extra person in the group. <laughs> like if I'm with like, uh, four people, I'll mm-hmm. think there's five people. <laughs> kind of feel like there's five. Yeah. I always mm. think like, I always count an extra person. <laughs> <laughs> and like it, it it was highlighted most uh funnily enough when i was doing drugs once with um a friend like a couple friends of mine mm-hmm. and you know the the three of us doing you know having sex doing drugs and me always thinking there were four people mm-hmm. to the point where like i would get four glasses i would make four lines i would you know like but just uh sub- kind of subconsciously but totally subconsciously just wow. really yeah. and everyone would be like like they would be like anna like there's we're only three. three of us yeah what do you <laughs> i was like for? Oh, oh yeah like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like where is obviously. the yeah. <laughs> obviously yeah. Um, when did this happen huh when did this happen when did uh like me thinking there's four people or uh when, when was the the thing with the with the lines and stuff uh that was um in my like second year in berlin so 2017, 2017. i really that really started happening and then when i was in um in barcelona recently like mm. i also had this thing where i was counting an extra person mm. and um and yeah and my mom when i was a kid my mom often said things like you just you know things anna like you're, you're too young but you somehow know things and you're like there's some kind of psychic level like well some yeah i don't know and uh and sensitive yeah. man <laughs> yeah some people are connected <laughs> yeah and i think i think the whole other person thing there and being open to it like mum's always said it's because you know my twin died so there's like a part of me that's there in the in the other world mm-hmm. and i'm here and... like some part of con- connection thing yeah yeah but when did your i don't know if this is okay to ask of course when, of course. when did your twin die i'm um, in the womb so like uh my mom didn't know it's a crazy story my mom um was pregnant mm-hmm. she started bleeding uh i think it was like I don't know exactly. Um, she wrote it all down for me at one point recently when I was writing this joke. But like, I think she might have been maybe five. I'm gonna guess five months into her pregnancy. Okay, so it's so formed. she was pregnant. Yeah, it was it was formed ish, I guess formed. But um, she started bleeding, and so she went into the hospital. They were like, "Oh yeah, you're having a miscarriage." So one of them is. Well, she didn't know she had twins. Oh, son of a business. Yeah, so she, they were gonna. So they were like, "Oh, you're having a miscarriage. We'll we'll get you cleaned out." So they put her into surgery and the nurse that taking her into surgery was like, have you been scanned? And she was like, no, I haven't had a scan. She was like, oh, oh, turned the turned bed around. To to, and then as they were scanning her, um, the nurse was like, oh, one's still alive. And mom was like, what do you mean one is still alive? She's like, yeah, it was twins. twins. Yeah. Son of a bitch. So it was uh, completely like mom had no idea. And then, yeah, there I was. And sort of the, the twin that um, died, we don't even know the sex, just kind of bled out. And I was the one that, yeah, survived. So wow. That's okay. right. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of, because, of, and mom told me this when I was maybe like six or seven and finding that, that you out. you had a twin? Yeah, that I had a, yeah. I always like, felt like I had a twin brother, but I never did. Yeah, well. <laughs> it was never, it was never the thing. That's interesting. Well, maybe. Maybe yeah. I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Maybe. My mom said, I'm, uh, "One child, that's it." Yeah. Uh, but uh, I've, I've, the way I was born was weird as well. Yeah. Uh, how? 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 Because uh, first of all, first of all, my my when my mom got pregnant with me, my they they already had two children. Uh huh. So my dad was like, "We don't have the financial capacity." To do this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know it's like, have you seen jim gaffigan's bit about how many kids he has no he's like um you know what it's like having four children well imagine you have three children and then you're swimming in the ocean and then someone 
passes you a baby. <laughs> like you're drowning. <laughs> what is it? It's like you're drowning and then someone hands you a baby. <laughs> Here, <laughs> take care of this now too. <laughs> so yeah, my dad was like, I don't, I don't know. Because there's two daughters already. Yeah. Uh, one of them is properly like already aged, starting to be a teenager. So like problems. You know? Yeah, <laughs> problems, dude. Fuck. I mean, teenagers. Having, having kids is probably insane. I don't oh. know. I really want to be a dad at some point. Yeah. 1,000%. Yeah. But I'm like. But it's a lot. It's it's a thing. Yeah. It's It's definitely a thing. Anyway, so uh, yeah, he was like, I don't know if we can do this. My mom was like, fuck you, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's happening, yeah. I don't, I'm not taking this away. Anyway, Yeah. so I get born and I'm a boy. And mm -hmm. uh, my dad was not allowed to be in the hospital at that point because he was... Uh, he he had like problems with the police because Bulgaria is super. And it was too long. Anyway, my dad was not at the hospital. I thought your at dad was like a diplomat. Well, he thought so too until <laughs> he got to Bulgaria. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh shit, that's he got, crazy. Then he got hella played all types of ways. Uh, should we pause for a second? Nah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I get I go to the hospital da, 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 with obviously in my mom. I get born. The moment that I get born, um, the nurse is like, "Are you sure you want to keep it?" What? They asked my mom, are you sure you want to keep it? Three times. And she's like, 1,000%. I want to keep it. It's my son, obviously. You know, I'm keeping this this kid. They're like, are you sure? Because da -da -da, the dad is not really here right now. No, something, something, something. And it's so strange. Oh, my God. So, this is incredible. So I was taken away. This is racism, right? It's because you were brown? I am not sure. This is the crazy part of the story. Brown? Because they, yeah. so they, take, they take me away from my mom. Usually the 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 <gasps> moment that a kid is born, they place it on yeah, the mother's yeah, chest, yeah. and then so on and so. Forth. None of this has happened. They straight take me away somewhere, and my mom had not seen me for two days. <gasps> so my mom at this point is like, "What the fuck is going on?" Right, and she feels kind of uneasy in her stomach, which is usually normal after you obviously give no, after you give birth, I so guess, on. Yeah. But she felt some some kind of uneasy thing. So she went to the toilet, and. She figured out that they left in her the umbilical cord, which if it rots, it poisons your blood and you die. Yeah, fuck. So she's taken this thing out of her feeling like it's guts or something because, you know, it. I don't even know what oh, kind of whoa. thing that is. Anyway, she takes that shit out, somehow fixes her own self in the fucking toilet. I love after women. She, after, <laughs> straight what up, What a queen. Man, fuck. Straight up. Starts searching for me, right? Can't find me, can't find me, can't find me. Finds me in one of the places where they put, like, um, kids in this, like, plastic thing. And they... Um, like premature blue babies? Lights, uh, blue, put blue lights on them. No, no, no. I wasn't a premature baby. I was a really, really healthy. But one of those baby. things, but, like, an area where they had the prem the premies or... Yeah, like, uh, I think so. Like, a, yeah, yeah. If they're in, like, the, the gla kind of in the protected glass thing. because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. still developing. Yeah, Kind yeah, of, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, I, first, I was born a very, very healthy baby. Fat ass, good... Four kilogram motherfucking baby. Boom. Strong ass motherfucking yeah. baby. Yeah. And the first thing that the nurse said was like, he's always going to be fat and short. What the fuck? Weird shit. Weird. Right? Weird. My mom runs, finds me in one of these things with the lights on. Mm -hmm. And usually uh, babies have like these uh, like protective glasses so that they don't fuck up their eyes. I didn't have no glasses. And my eyes were blood red. What the fuck? So they tried to fucking blind me. What which the is fuck? insane. My mom takes me away from this shit. They start screaming at her. You're not allowed to be here. She's like, my son's eyes are falling out of his fucking face because you guys are not doing your jobs right. This is horrifying. This is horrible. Straight up. And so she takes me. Uh, she, she takes me with her. She falls asleep. And then they take me again away from her. And the second time that they take me away, my mom wakes up and starts searching for me again. And she finds me in a room. With three other babies in these like things, in these like glass, whatever mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And some people, she doesn't even, they don't look like doctors or anything. Just a group of people, like six dudes, just sitting and looking at the kids. What the fuck? She's like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? What is happening? I have no hospital? idea. This sounds also illegal. Insane shit, dude. <laughs> she steals me from this situation and just runs. Just leaves the hospital, dude. Dude, this is insane. Straight up just leaves the hospital. My dad sees me for the first times, and I'm super white. And he's like, this is not my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
my god, dude, this is horrible. <laughs> so insane, but then I was like, this is not my son. Da, da, da. At one point, I started getting back the color. He's like, okay, that's my son. That's fine. Do you think with the lamps that they had you under, were they trying to like? But that's the opposite of what like lamps would make you brown or no? <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> I have no idea, man. What the fuck? It's like these. Um, my mom tried to explain it to me. It's like these lights that they put kids under to uh, get away some type of germs. Or I'm not really sure. It's, okay. It's like these blue lights. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not sure if they still do it. If it was like a practice from way back or some shit like this. But in any case, they try to first not give me to my mom more than three times. Dude. Try to blind me and then try to somehow steal me again and try to kill my mom. What the fuck? Before I was even like able to speak and do shit. You know what I mean? I'm so sorry, dude. That is horrible. Like Super that's crazy. That is. That's a know. lot of um, like that's OK. So like we're we're resilient Humans are amazing what they can withstand, but you know, it's like, unnecessary. I, I, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's un and there's trauma there. Like there's, there's like deep, you know, um, deep cell trauma that happens in those moments. Most right? definitely. Um, I, I had a, not a similar situation at all, but I got very, very sick. Um, like I think maybe a month after I was born mm -hmm. so sick that they had to, um, they took me into hospital. They thought I was going to die. Mm. And, um, and so, yeah, like, uh, they had to, a lumbar puncture is when you take um, fluid out of your spinal cord. I know. Yeah, yeah. They did that on me as a baby. As a baby. As a baby. And uh, they had me in the hospital for like weeks and yeah, they had no idea what was wrong with me. Um, and when I look back, I'm like, maybe, maybe they were like, interesting. I don't know. Maybe there was, because I'm a, a strong part of you missing. Yeah. Or yeah. Like grief. Like, mm. I wonder if it was grief of, like, being A, out of the womb, but B, like... Um, Knowing without that there was someone else there, too. Yeah, without the person, like, the other, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But, yeah, I'm a strong believer of um, of any kind of physical ailment, any illness often being connected to stress or basically emotions. You same, know? same. And I, and I don't like saying that because there's lots of... I don't like saying it too much because there's lots of people with cancer and, you know, whatever. And it seems so unfair, you know, certain sicknesses. But things aren't fair in general. But things aren't fair and often people are holding a lot of trauma and a lot of... and stress that they haven't processed and that manifests physically. And I Most think... Most definitely And I does. think the upsurge in cancer and, and, and illnesses like that is definitely... Like, you know, different things were killing, killing us back in the day, right? Mm. Like like poor hygiene and, and diet and whatever. Mm. But now we've got everything, you know, the new, the new um, I think like cancer is really just working too much. And then you get cancer. Like, you know, like you, I, I, I tend You're to You're just think, over, 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 overwork it, yourself exactly. in a way that you don't really want to do. And depression is also another thing that's yeah. also very similar to this thing where you, the Jim Carrey said that depression is uh, yourself being tired of the of the persona you're trying to be yeah not, yeah somehow totally you know moni would agree with that that sounds exactly like what moni would describe it as i mean anybody anyone that's living right now anything that you do anything that you say it's a persona that more or less you've created for yourself yeah the moment that the place that you're living in right now all of these things are a combination of all the decisions you've made in your life you yeah. wear the t-shirt you wear because of the show that you watched because of the show that you chose to watch you yeah. know what i mean yeah yeah all of these things so at one point if you don't speak to yourself like to your inner child self thing yes. like to your pure this is whatever i feel like i should be doing yeah if you don't speak to this and you're doing the stuff that society is showing you that you're supposed to do at one point you will be depressed totally. because you know that that's this is not what you should be doing but also you don't know what you should be doing yeah because you haven't listened to yourself for long yeah. enough and then you get into this like loop thing where you're like what what am i supposed to do i don't want to do this i don't want to do this this doesn't fit and i don't want to do nothing now yeah exactly and that's depression and that is depression yeah i you know um, yeah yeah i definitely came to berlin to yeah to find myself um why, why did you come to berlin skateboarding skateboarding right okay. i came to uh, that's another weird ass story i have, I have so many of these like weird ass situations mm. in my life because i moved first i moved to germany in general I had in, off. yeah in the span of three days or three or four days wow because there was a dude in bulgaria because bulgaria is super weird i had a lot of situations where i almost got killed by skinheads 
and I was like, I can't be here anymore. Energetically, I was I threw it out into the universe. I was like, I cannot be here anymore. Yeah. I didn't have the financial way to move. I didn't know anybody in fucking anywhere else in the world. Yeah. My sisters were in Germany, but they couldn't like take me in because they had their own fucking stuff. They just moved there, so they have their own shit to, to figure out first. Yeah. You know, I can't be, you know. Yeah. And this dude just randomly came to the that I know uh, came to the skate park where I skate every day. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, you want to go to Germany? That's so great. And I was like, yeah, but I don't have no money. I, there's, n- there's no way this is happening, right? Yeah. I can't buy a ticket even. Yeah. He's like, there's no problem. I came with a car, so I'm going to go with a car. So you can come with me in the car. It's a big car, so you can carry a bunch of your stuff. And I was like, okay, but what am I supposed to do in Germany? And he's like, you can live at my place until you figure your shit out. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, and then you can move. I was like, all right, cool. I, and he told me on on thursday and i left on sunday that's fucking beautiful that's it. i just packed up all my shit and i was like all right mom i'm leaving she's like where are you going I'm, like, I'm going to germany i'm gonna live in germany now and she's like what do you mean i was like yeah this dude came <laughs> to me at the skate park and wanted me to go to <laughs> she's like are you fucking sure i'm like my st- i'm leaving yeah <laughs> you know, mom this yeah. is done but then when i came i first came to berlin mm-hmm. and then moved to dusseldorf then uh, to essen then to do stuff again and then to Berlin again. Okay, that's quite a that's quite a jump. Yeah, because uh, the guy, one week and a half into me being here, he was like, "Okay, you need to leave now." Oh damn! <laughs> yeah, <and> I was <laughs> a kid. I was literally a kid. I don't know German. I don't oh, know where the fuck I am. Shit. He just left me at the Berlin Hauptbahnhof. Oh wow! Yeah, and I stayed there for like twelve hours waiting for a midfagi leg and height with all my baggages. Kid, not no German, nothing. Uh. I just stood there for like twelve hours. Because I don't know where to go. And I can't really go anywhere because I have so many things with me, you know? Yeah. Fuck. Just just dropped them off at Hobbin and I was like, figure your shit out. And what? It, and so then you went to Dusseldorf because... I uh, went to Dusseldorf to see my sisters. Uh-huh, yeah. And I was like, okay, because I had some... I took some stuff from Bulgaria to give to my sisters as well. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to go to Dusseldorf, leave the shit at my sister's place, yeah. fly back to Bulgaria somehow. I'm going to ask them maybe they have like some money spared over yeah. so they can give me to like buy a ticket back to Bulgaria. Yeah. Right? And I went to Dusseldorf and I stayed for, I think a week and they scouted me to model for Abercrombie and Fitch. Nice. <laughs> I was like, fuck it. Okay. Let me do this, make the money and yeah. then fly back. Right. Fuck yeah. So I started doing those things and then they wanted me to work for them in the shop. So I was like, okay, got a job, got a job. <laughs> <laughs> Now I got the unmelding. Now yeah. I got a bank card for the first time in my life. Now I got an actual job for the first time in my life. I'm working, that's you know. That's amazing, dude. And uh, and that's that's it. I literally moved to be able to skateboard. That's perfect. You know, I wanted to be a professional skateboarder. That yeah. was my idea. That's why I'm moving. I yeah. need something else. Here is not happening. Mm-hmm. I'm almost getting killed every day. Fuck this place. Let me leave. So Fuck I left. Yeah. Came came to whatever this place is now and yeah basically that's it it's crazy when you um what's the there's two things there like when you put something out into the universe about what you need it's Always crazy comes back. like i was when we we're in, and this is just like you know two weeks ago in barcelona i was you know on on all the apps looking for apartments mm. and um and well, I were said, you living in Barca? Was, what no, happened? no, just two weeks. Okay. Just two week holiday. Okay. But um, but when I was there, I knew that coming back because I'd already told my housemates that I'm going to move out, mm. looking for a place. And uh, I let the first week in Barcelona just be a holiday, and I wasn't really looking for apartments. Let me relax. And the second week, I was like, well, I get home in a week, so I need to, I need like, and I and I put it out into the universe. I was like. I just want to get, I just want some offer so that I feel like I've got hope. Like it doesn't have to be, but like, I want to get invited to an into like to a viewing or I want, I want to get some kind of response and, and, and hope before I come back to Berlin. So mm-hmm. I don't arrive super depressed after being in, in Barcelona. Mm. And I said that out loud. And then the next day, Alex messaged me and he was like, you know what? Like, do you want, do you want to live in the, my spare room? Because mm. I, and it was like, yes yes like i just i put it out there one thousand percent manifestation is the biggest like geest thing it's that exists great it's crazy Damn. and it was also like when i moved to berlin as well it was like within a week i had a job mm. you know like like i could set up but like immediately like it was it was just you know uh, everything just brrr, paved itself mm. so quickly and yes sometimes you struggle but if you if you know what you need you gotta decide though 
you got to decide. You got to decide. You got to really want it, and then stuff just um, you know mm. unravels out in front of you. It's it's like with manifestation things. I've because uh, I read the this book that was called like The Secret. Like oh, way you, back you read when The I, Secret. Uh-huh. Way I back, haven't read like, it a long time ago when yeah. I was like in Bulgaria still. Because that's the only thing that you could you could just like pray like look this is gonna be better this is gonna be better. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way it's not gonna. It sounds like me and all my past relationships like it's gonna get <laughs> it's gonna get better. I'm gonna like him at some point. <laughs> He's and gonna mother- like me. <laughs> Isn't it mother? Oh man, so so strange. So bad. How but things it, have changed, yeah. But the secret, so yeah. Uh, and uh, is it all about manifestation, right? Is it all about visioning, envisaging what you want, and then that? I'm I'm there because the secret basically says uh, whatever you want, you just have to put it out into the universe, and then you're gonna get it. Yeah, I think that's wrong. Yeah, I one thousand percent think that's wrong because a lot of people send it out as I want a house, I want to this, yeah, I, want to work. That. <laughs> I want to I want a car or something. And what you're doing energetically to the universe that way is you're sending out I want, I want, I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a mirror. It's gonna throw back at you you want you want you want yeah if you say but it's also hard to say i have when you don't have it yeah you know so you have to basically envision personally that's how Mm -hmm. i feel like it works the best envision and really try and like crystallize as crisp as you can the idea of what you desire or Mm -hmm. where you want to go or how you want things to happen Mm -hmm. picture it picture it picture it say it once out loud Mm. leave it Totally. If you, I think if you then are um, really focusing on something, mm. focusing on the want, then you're just aware of what you don't have. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, say it, it highlights leave it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then it comes back. And then it comes but back. But if, if you say it and you hold it, obviously you haven't released that out into the universe. It's Boom. never going to bounce back at you. You, you got to release it. You got to release that you gotta shit. You got to release it so it comes back. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. And otherwise it's like you've also got to be living like you've got to be, yeah. Ah, Buddhism. You've got to, you know, you, you're just going to be like giving yourself the best possible foundation to be happy in, in yeah. the moment and accepting where you're at. But in doing that, also being like, oh, in order for me to be happy in this moment, like in my old apartment, it was like knowing that my existence was disturbing people. It was like, all right, this is a problem. I need to fix it. But while I'm here, don't think about it. Just mm. try to just just try and trust trust yourself that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. But like take some steps to get the fuck out of there you exactly know? but not focusing you know not like putting all the energy yeah. you know doing doing enough to lay like to pave the way to exactly. a, a better present moment yeah <laughs> 1000 percent. also you have to do yes the, the, you can't be like i want to be rich and then just sit there and wait for richness exactly it's like you know? i want an apartment dude it's a full-time job Download all the apps, try. register, get all your paper mints, be paper ready documents, be ready to move at the drop of the hat. Like yeah. if you want, if you want, if you want a new job, you need to be on all the, all the websites and you need to be asking people and you yeah. need to, you know, you need I'm to searching for a job. How? Yeah. How? <laughs> when literally the way, cause now with this testing thing, I was like, uh, before that I used to work as a. <laughs> You were doing as, verse? A, com- as no. a comedic business consultant. Comedic business <laughs> consultant. <laughs> yeah. Oh la la. Uh, I worked for this startup. The uh, it's called Paint Gun, and I don't know if I'm supposed. I worked for this startup. And <laughs> <laughs> no promo. It's not called and that one. It's, it's a not called that. It's, it's something else. Mm, uh, what happened with this? Why? What? When? When were you working there? Uh, the lockdown stuff. So until First lockdown? until no no until okay. February until February 2021. So November to February. Yeah, November to February. Mm-hmm. And I was working uh, this this like whatever meme dude for this bank. Right. So this bank was paying this company to make meme advertisements, Okay, which was fun to do because yeah. I had to do like whatever, 20 second videos. Mm-hmm. And I had to do oh, that was well, that, that was video. You did some videos on Instagram. Yeah. The yeah. Card I, ones. Uh, yeah. I started posting some of them, but they're just, they're hurting me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed to. I felt like I needed to like release some of them that I kind of liked to. Mm-hmm. To energetically basically show the universe, like, I can do this shit too. Yeah. And if it's a product that I would like to to do this with, it's going to be, like, 50 times better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Totally. Because <laughs> <Totally. Yeah. laughs> there was, like, a, how do you make a bank card that doesn't have... Anyway, that's too much. <laughs> uh, I was wondering what was happening. Yeah. So, okay, so basically, you, uh, I saw these videos that you put on Instagram. It was, like, you talking... Like, a, it was, like, this great 
credit card or something. Yeah. And I was like, what is the story behind this? Like, what is... What the like, fuck is Like, this? are you smoking a lot? Like, I'm not sure. Because <laughs> like, there's a backstory here that I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed watching them. <laughs> I tried putting uh, in, in a story like, okay, I was uh, tasked with doing these meme videos. I'm going to be releasing them every whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, funniest comment gets... Or like, funniest comment or roast to the things because they are really cringy videos. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> Uh, but that was I think that was the the, the funny thing about the them. funny thing yeah. about them yeah, they were funnily like, mm, cringe yeah. like, but I wasn't uncomfortable watching it it was just like this is silly this is silly <laughs> <laughs> this is just silly but the point was that, that it have to be like no actual like thought behind them they were supposed to be randomly funny yeah. including the card yeah. somehow okay but the card had a lot of things behind it that needed to be said in the videos uh-huh. so it couldn't they, they had they told me like you can do whatever you want uh-huh. But you have to say these things uh-huh. and you have to do this, this and this and you have to do this, this and this. I energetically wanted that job. Yeah. I was I set out into New Let me do something with comedy during this lockdown thing yeah. and get paid from it. Yeah. I got paid healthily. Nice. For doing these things. Nice. I didn't feel good doing them. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I was like, OK, because I stopped working for those people because I obviously for lack of um, how do you call this? Uh, for lack of uh, engagement into it, because mm-hmm. I started like not really caring about the job, yeah. and they they kept paying me, but I wasn't putting an effort. Yeah. Uh, and at one point they stopped, obviously, yeah. because you know whatever. Yeah. It's obviously I'm not doing any effort to make this good in any way. Yeah. Don't post this. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I have nothing to hide. I don't, I don't like it. No, but it's it's important. Like the thing is, um, your emotional connection to um, the, the the product and like the process of making the product mm. and like the the kind of freedom that you have within mm. it. Yeah, it, it comes out and like you can't you can't change how you feel about it. Like no. you're not gonna you can't force yourself to do something. You can't force yourself to like something as well. No, you can't force yourself to like something. Exactly. Not possible. Exactly. But these there people hired me from comedy. Great. They came to uh, a show at Mars mm-hmm. and they were like, whoa, this is so great. Are you doing more of these shows? Because I was hosting that night. Like, you're doing more of these shows. I'm like, yeah, I even have shows that I just perform. I don't host that. Mm-hmm. Gave them all the links. This person that owns this company basically came to eight more shows and awesome. invited every single time, invited like four people. Oh, great. So he, this dude came with a pack of four people. That's five people audience instantly right there. Perfect. You know, That's Super nice. Nice. More people nice. came to the show, obviously. Yeah. But... This dude was always there eight times until the last show that we had because afterwards it was locked down. Yeah. Uh, he was there every time. That's great. And then he came up and he was like, okay, we have this company. Do you think that you can come and like talk to us about these things? We're trying to make it comedic. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. Let me let me see this person, right? Yeah. I, I'm always like a person that is open to opportunities. Yeah. I'll go. I'll see what it is. Yeah. If I like it, I don't. I'll decide later. Mm-hmm. And I worked that shit and now I work in this test center thing because I lost that job. And I was like, okay, I need to get a job. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Just give me any type of job. Mm-hmm. My girlfriend was like, oh, there's this testing center. I was like, okay, I'm going to go check it out. Mm-hmm. As I always do. I just mm-hmm. go check it out. Mm-hmm. I go check it out. And the lady was like, do you want to start like uh, in like two days? <laughs> I was like, fuck, okay. You Done. know, signed a contract right there. Done. Boom. When, what, and now how I'm long is the contract for? Because like, I guess. Six months. Six months. It's like okay. a probation thing, but yeah, they yeah. always like prolong it because the yeah. job that i'm doing requires no mental effort whatsoever that's nice how many hours uh, this random how many like how often do you work uh, i work three days a week uh, and i work like six hours or some shit oh, that's six, nice. six to eight hours that's great it's fine that's perfect you know? yeah i get like a uh, comedy job baby comedy job I, I, got, I, I got the I, perfect comedy job too yeah what do you work i'm uh, looking after two kids i pick them up from school i cook them dinner i leave that's wonderful <laughs> i know <laughs> And you get like properly paid? Yeah. Like Enough better, like as much as I was getting the Kita. And I oh, do, son I do of a 10 business. hours less a week. And they've just told me that actually the kids are going to be with their mum every second week, but they don't want to change my contract because they're just happy that they've found me. Oh, so wow. I'm going to be working 40 get, hours a month. But getting paid getting for. Get paid for getting paid for 80. Ooh. And it's also with kids. Yeah, which are like they're just great. Like I just it's a I little wonder every day. And they and they're super independent because they're six and eight years old. So okay. I'm just like hanging out on the couch. Little humans. They come already. to me when they have problems, and then I cook dinner and I eat with them and I ciao, and then I get paid and I wow. get my health insurance. I get <laughs> I get health insurance. <laughs> 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 and it's like and they live right around the corner from Space Medusa. Mm. But 
You've worked to get this. I have worked very hard to get. You know this. what I I've mean? I've worked so hard to you get. You put this. in the uh, these because like people hear about like oh yeah I worked this wonderful job and yeah. people are like oh what is how did you find this you know yeah as if it's like overnight success motherfucker I've worked for this shit I've, you know dude I've you put know in languages the you've been in Akita I I did English teaching in Berlin which is the most unstable like. Uh, dumb stuff with no health insurance like you can only be a freelancer i did that for three years i've worked restaurants i've gone down with restaurants that went bankrupt i've done you know working at this keto where i was bullied for a fucking two years like for no fucking reason for no fucking reason <laughs> you know fucking, you should see the reference that i got from that keto they loved me you know like okay. and, the, and the parents as well and whatever but yeah and now i've found this you know wonderful uh, thing and, and you gotta you gotta put in the work and then i can mm. that's, that's a manifestation yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing yeah and that's also another thing from like the happiness stuff now you can now you can have a reference point exactly this is wonderful my yeah. apartment is nice i'm getting paid mm. health insurance is there i'm doing this podcast with like these nice comedians fucking comedy is opening back up again yes. which is motherfucking wonderful oh my god let's signed up for so many shows destroy these Two shows shit. let's get all <laughs> the shows back let's find new so venues hyped. i want to do and with my new job now like i am so set to do comedy Every night, like I will, I've already, like I've got three, three weekly shows and I think I'll make it like more. <laughs> you have three, you have three weekly shows? I have three weekly shows. Where, where and where? At Harry Bitches, Mars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Adults Only Comedy Open Mic, uh, mm -hmm. Tuesdays, Mishlivska. And then Sundays at the Wall Grindhouse Comedy, mm -hmm. which is the long format, um, double bill. Me, me is it still? Sometimes my solo show. <laughs> when did they, when, uh, when are your like first shows happening again? Don't know, mate. Um, we still haven't got confirmation when everything's going to open, but okay. we're thinking, because it depends on the numbers. So if Berlin's numbers stay under a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. well, I don't know what it is actually a hundred. Uh, I'll be testing fools all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're helping baby. You're helping. <laughs> Make sure they're crazy. negative. <laughs> which which is crazy because every single day we test over like over 800 people safe safe we test wow. over 800 where's people. your test center uh lichtenberg okay i'm not gonna go there no it's really far damn but there is every day maybe one or two positive okay maybe okay that's interesting so where are these numbers coming from i, I couldn't know, tell right? you there's so many that uh Okay, I don't want to be caught on record, but there's a lot of things in these testing centers that are, like, very shady and Dude. very, like, hmm. Dude, I had a PCR test to go to Barcelona, and the two women who administered my test... Uh, they were just women. Like I would call them like teenagers. <laughs> okay. They were whispering. They they looked so uncertain. They didn't know how to scan the thing. They got out the 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 swab and they looked at it and they looked confused and they opened mm. up. Then they asked for like in the cubicle next to us. They asked for scissors and then they cut it and like the thing flew across the the desk the and like thing. onto the floor like half of it. And then they did my swab and I was like, got to the point where I actually said like, Alice, good here. Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> Do you need some help like, testing me? Like, do you want to get a supervisor? Because I think you should. <laughs> and then you know what happened? Uh, the test results were supposed to come within 48 hours. After 24 hours, I got an email saying that um, my test may have been, been invalid. positive. Uh -oh. And they need to retest. Okay. And so what, what did I do? I went, I was like, fuck this. I went straight and found it. Um, and this was the day before we were supposed to fly. Mm. Like I had one day before. We were sp so I found an emergency test set, like ones that do the, the, the really fast PCR mm -hmm. paid another freaking 110 euro. Mm. They gave the results within 30 minutes and it was a PCR mm. and um, negative. Mm. Negative. So, yeah, like, I wonder how many things are positive. I even had the Rona. Missed testing, like, poor testing. You even what? You even I had, had the Rona. You had the Rona, right? I had the Rona in March. Yeah. In Mar March this year? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're, like, uh, you're immune. Like immune. Supposedly for the next up until six to Another, eight months. Yeah, it six depends. To eight months. Whatever yeah, it is. That's cool. I can show, like, a negative, uh, you can show a positive, like, testing. Supposedly it's, like, an impfung thing. Like yeah, yeah, a, it is. It is. So I can, like, go into clubs and all this shit yeah. without getting tested every fucking day. Lake, having had retarded. covid means you yeah it's the same as having the immunization kind of and the crazy thing about that is mm. though uh i got a pcr test positive schnell test uh, first i got a schnell test negative then i got a pcr test positive yeah like what then i got one more schnell test and then it negative. was negative what so i was Whoa. like what the hell does this mean 
I that had... means you had it a while ago. That's what it means because the PCR test um, is able to uh, find deep, longer, older traces yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of the thing. Well, it meant that but you I was were... just, yeah. there was no way for me to have had it before though, which is crazy mm. because uh, I didn't have contact with anybody but my girlfriend. My girlfriend got tested obviously negative because yeah. we were supposed to fly to Fuerteventura. Uh-huh. Didn't get to fly, got stuck in Dusseldorf with my sisters, oh. which was a wonderful like 14 nice. day Uh, lockdown with my sisters we did yoga we mm. did all types of massages all types of shit because of the chinese medicine uh, learn yeah, shit yeah, about yeah. the body i can do crazy other stuff with the body too now cool. whatever uh and i didn't have any symptoms though Zero yeah, yeah symptoms. That, and that's what scares me like when like if you book a flight and then you have to get this test like now we're getting tested more regularly but it's like it's when it's asymptomatic it's like boom asymptomatic and all your plans are fucked <laughs> yeah yeah I don't, even, i don't even care about who i might give it to i just care about the fact that oh no now all I of this shit can't do nothing now <laughs> oh that's wild. crazy that's this is wild yeah okay and but but um your girlfriend never got it no that's yeah and and i hear stories about this all the time i've been in so close contact with people with covid like at the kita mm -hmm. that i worked at there were several children that had it and i was in very close contact with them like kids there's no never there's no it. personal space mm -hmm. distance never got it mm -hmm. uh colleagues who were positive never, never got, got it. it just like i've been in so much contact with it and haven't had it and been tested i don't even know like the I don't know, COVID is like this weird topic that everybody is like talking about way too much. And I'm like, come on. And you're working at a testing center. So. And I work in a testing center. <laughs> I can't hear this anymore. Uh, oh, and Germans are so weird to get tested because they, for some reason, Germans really love, regardless of whatever their age is, to act like children. Just What do you love mean? love it. How so? Because you, for example, like I have to... Uh, get their booking number and mm -hmm. after they I've get the, after I, I get their booking number and like this iPad thing uh -huh. a name pops up and then I ask for the name and then they respond with if that's their name or not or I have to see their ID card oh yeah whatever every time I read a name let's say Hans they're like yeah, yeah that's finished yeah so they every act like time. kids yes <laughs> and every time they get tested they're like oh no uh, is it gonna hurt is it gonna hurt really well, this is people that are over 30 They get they the thing just touches Actually, the edge of Shahak, their nose. Shahak Shapiro was like that. No way. He was like he was like, what? They don't have the goggle test. They don't have the goggle test here. And we're like, nah, man, it's the classic P. And he was like, oh, and he was really nervous and unhappy about it. That's strange. I mean, it it, I'm it feels I'm him as it a feels German. it feels slightly uncomfortable, most definitely. But people scream, the and when I mean what? Sc when I mean scream, I mean. It sounds like somebody's stabbing people to death. Oh you know what God. I mean? There's, really? There's people that scream. There's people that sneeze. There's people that spit. There's this one guy that was like, oh, I make noises just to just to let you guys know. I make noises when you do this thing with the nose. And we're like, okay, no problem. Bro, he covered the, the, the swab guy. He just covered him in spit snot and whatever you can think of. Ew. He was like, oh, <laughs> oh, and just spitting and... <laughs> <laughs> it takes like five seconds to relax, you know. Yeah, what I mean? well, it's actually three, right? Like in each nostril, right? Just one, wait, two. The 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 teenagers that fucked up my one, she uh, she did it so rough on then one nostril, and like I've done it before. She was then like, okay, again now, and I was like, the other nostril, and she was like, no, same. She did the same fucking nostril. Why? She'd already like broken my nostril, and she wanted to go back into the. It's like do the other side, and she was like, yeah. no. Uh, by the way, all of these things that are, if it's the nose, if it's the mouth, if it's the thing, if it's how long you got to do it. If it no, first, from whatever the, the spreadsheet of how to do it is, yeah, yeah. first of all, almost nobody does it correctly. Yeah. Because people are just being weird. Yeah. And you kind of, more or less, you can't, you know, because they really are like, oh, nah, I can't. This is too much. This is, uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> so you... <laughs> make it always sound like a born <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> it's too much oh no oh, no. oh please no <laughs> not all the way in oh. <laughs> only eight centimeters oh. <laughs> it's almost there it's almost there three seconds left <laughs> like, what the fuck man? take it out take it out <laughs> put it back in did it work <laughs> not that hole <laughs> fucking oh my god man. people yeah man so fuck. it's not it, and <laughs> There's so much things about these tests that make no sense to me. Man. <sighs> if I go into it, if I go into it, maybe I'll get fired. I don't know, but it's it's a whole to me. 
I don't know if it's like okay to say these things because nowadays it's like oh, oh if you, say if you, it, if say if it. If you're like an anti-vaxxer person, or if you're a pro-vaxxer person, or if you're an anti-test person, or if you think that COVID exists, or if you think that it mm-hmm. doesn't, mm-hmm. I think it exists because I've had experiences with it already. Yeah. I kind of lost some smell. I'm kind mm-hmm. of getting it back now after oh, like a long ass time. Yeah, but interesting. I don't know if it's as dangerous as they say, and I don't know if. It's as widely spread as they say. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I have no te- idea. We, we tested because re- I'm at, you know, we have so many tests. Mm. Some of them we throw out because we, for example, if you rip the test earlier than you should and it like stays out too much, then mm. it doesn't show as accurate as it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you, because you do a lot of these things, as I told you, 800 a day yeah it's so you have to do like a very mundane task which is like open swab drip two drip, times on yeah. the thing leave it for 15 minutes and you do this very 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 often yeah and sometimes you would like rip a test and be like oh i didn't need to rip it now yeah because yeah, you're just yeah. like in the, you're in, a machine in, mode. in the machine mm-hmm. mode yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so you have like a lot of tests lying around which as one does <laughs> you would test shit on it you know yeah you tested mate tested a banana tested <laughs> That's hilarious. Tested a banana. I don't want to tell you how scary it is because a lot of these things come out positive. Really? And I don't know if we get COVID from mate or bananas, but that shit comes out positive. That's crazy. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's crazy. I'm still very, very anal, even though um, they say that the uh, surface contact isn't such an issue. But I still sanitize my hands before I I touch my mouth. Or my eyeballs or my whatever. Like I'm always sanitizing my hands when I, not necessarily at home, right? At home is at home. But when I'm out, if I'm like public transport, anything, I'm, I'm constantly. Sanitize your hands. I sanitize. I sanitize. It's fine though. But it's yeah. that's just like normal hygiene. No, like that's new for me. <laughs> you used to just touch your face? Dude, I would, yeah, antibodies, I have baby. mad pimples, dude. I can't be doing that shit. Uh, I, <laughs> my face is like so sensitive to these oh, things. Oh, really? I've got, I've got pretty resilient skin and just generally. Um, but I, you know, and antibodies, like just typically speaking you know if you're exposed to it mm. then you're going to be all right mm. but since covid i am very vigilant around hand sanitize sanitation mm-hmm. uh, sanitization sanitation who knows who knows who knows <laughs> and, yeah and i think like i wonder how much that has played into me not getting it because well I'm obviously you quite, haven't so yeah. hey, 10 points for you thank, thank you oh yeah <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Fist bump. um all right so we haven't really sp- spoken about anything like dirty mm-hmm. and we're at okay so let's let me open up the the table will open up the suitcase of sex toys and experiences and uh (laughs) whatever um filth you you might is there anything you'd like to ask or talk about regarding a a topic of like adults only disgusting this disgusting i don't think that any i don't think that any any stuff stuff connected to sex would be considered disgusting because it depends on whatever the people like i say it with love right when i say disgusting i'm like oh i'm so disgusting nasty (laughs) Nasty. i'm so gross (laughs) (laughs) well i remember as a kid for example they would be it would be looked down upon if you say something about like eating pussies oh yeah you know when you're a kid or when you're like a teenager like you know like i don't uh, yeah it's like uh, gross but i've always been like really fond of doing it Mm -hmm. because i'm like since i was a kid whatever somebody is like if the whole group of people are like really into it i'm like fuck that thing if the ah. whole group of people are like, we like, like the, we're uh, against this thing, I'm yeah. like, that shit's lovely. Yeah, yeah. I was also the, very much like, if everyone liked something, I'd be like, well, I'm not going to watch that. Or I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah. Or like, I'm more skeptical towards it. Totally, you know? totally. I'm not completely negative, but I'm yeah. more skeptical towards yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And when someone says that something is really bad, because mm-hmm. I've had the experience of people saying that I'm like, like the really angry, bad person, and I'm not. Yeah. So I always feel skeptical about yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, totally. I. Since since day one, I've been like, how do you eat pussy? How do you do this? Uh-huh. You know, how do you do this properly? Yeah. Uh, how do you make a person comfortable? How do you... Da, 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 da. Since day one, my parents have had a lot of discussions with me about if you have uh, any type of intimate situations with someone, mm-hmm. the whole ordeal is making them feel comfortable yes but being comfortable yourself because if you're not comfortable regardless of how much you try to make another person feel comfortable there's something in the air energetically it's not gonna happen totally totally. it is not gonna happen so first feel comfortable about yourself second make the other person feel comfortable about themselves yes that way you both of you can do what it what needs to be done 
<laughs> and you don't feel any shame or weirdness about whatever you're doing. You're just yeah. trying to feel pleasure. Yeah, That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's a fun game. We're having a good time. Yeah. You know, so on and so forth. So you more or less through the days, through the years, you kind of figure out what's what you like to do, what you don't mm -hmm. like to do. If mm -hmm. you feel comfortable trying stuff. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Personally, love eating pussy. Love eating pussy. That shit I'm, never let me down. <laughs> you know that's I mean? awesome. Does it hold up? Do you a bit like um does it excite you or is it more like uh you just enjoy you enjoy the process? Like like for example, if I um yeah, I recently said eating dick and I was like, that's so aggressive. <laughs> eating dick. <laughs> <laughs> like it sounds <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're <laughs> like you're chewing. <laughs> <laughs> eating dick. <laughs> eating dick. But like sucking dick. Um I really enjoy that. I really mm. enjoy that. And I've always, I've always enjoyed it. Even though like, yeah. there'll be female comedians who are like, oh my God, any woman who says she likes sucking dick is, is lying. lying. And it's Fuck like, Fuck out of here. It's like, get, <laughs> yeah, get out, get out of here. Like, I, I might like it. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy it. Um, but like, I still wouldn't like, I wouldn't, uh, I don't think I've ever, orga like, I don't think I, I will orgasm from my mouth doing it. Like, no, 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 no. no. Me but neither. I've never eaten a pussy and been like, Ooh, oh, I'm coming. <laughs> this pussy's so good. It makes me come. God damn it. <laughs> well, a woman recently at a show of mine said that there were way more points of all like, um, uh, orgasm points, like uh, G spots or, or whatever, mm -hmm. um, than what we think. And I have already learned about a few more that I knew before, but I think she said that one of them was oral and she also said nipple. Mm -hmm. And I was like an oral, like, I don't think I have a G point in my throat or mm -hmm. like, a. Um, well, the G spot is like it's very specific spot, but you know what mm -hmm. I mean, like a, an orgasm point in my throat. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But, but nipple, all... yes, I realized my first orgasm was actually when I was on stage mm -hmm. in front of all these people, and her, this woman was trying to educate us on the different points of orgasm um, in a woman's on a woman's body. She was like nipple, and I was like, huh. Because in a podcast episode I had recently, I think it was with Dave Adams, I was trying to remember the first time I ever orgasmed. And I think the reason why I didn't remember it was because I think it was a nipple orgasm. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? Nipple orgasm. Nipple. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you can do that. I mean, I've, I've read it's about all of these things, but I've, I've never like experienced somebody that would come from, from like... Uh, nipple play. Fr from nipple play, yeah. They, yeah. It's obvious that women would like it because it is a, a more sensitive thing. <laughs> your, your eyes just went down to nipple level there. Where? To your <laughs> yeah, nipple level? Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, bit. shit. I didn't even see. No, it was funny. <laughs> Sorry, I've also got like Eric Andre on my on my, on my chest. And he's 3D somehow. <laughs> and he's 3D. Kids love this t-shirt. It's, uh, it's very psychedelic. I think they love it because they're just staring at your nipples. They're like, is he bad? Is he bad? <laughs> I'm like, no. That's what they say? Yeah. Why? Because um, he's like, because he's taking a shit. Like, he's, I'm pretty I didn't sure even he's see. on this t shirt. Eric Andre is dropping his pants and taking a shit on the street. On the stage. <laughs> Dope ass dude. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool, man. Um, yeah, nipple, nipple orgasms, oral orgasms, eating pussy. I've eaten pussy. I, I like giving someone pleasure, but mm -hmm. I don't like, I prefer to be sucking dick. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more your thing. It's way more my thing. Well, I've never sucked dick. You've but, never sucked uh, dick? Nope, not once in my life. I've made out with dudes. Uh, mm. I've tried to understand if maybe I do lean towards that way because mm. I do find just the human body in general mm. beautiful. Mm. You know, that everyone has like some type of thing within them that I find beautiful. Yeah. Regardless of people being like, oh, I think I'm ugly or like... They, no, everybody does have something nice about them. Maybe it's yeah. one curve. Maybe it's one eye even, you know. Just the one. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> But there is something beautiful in everyone, I think. Yeah. And yeah. If if you just make them comfortable about that one thing, now it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. You know, it's a different. It's it's a completely different sex play. It's a, all of it just changes. And I've been uncomfortable in situations. Mm. You know. Mm. But to me personally, sex has never brought me proper satisfaction. Mm. Like jerking off. You mean I've, like penetrate pen penetrative sex has never? What do you mean? The whole thing. Sex has never given you full satisfaction. No, it gives me more satisfaction to give pleasure than to receive mm. pleasure because I often feel that if somebody is giving me pleasure, mm -hmm. somehow there is some type of uncomfort in them to be doing it. It's weird. I know what you mean. Like, I, I agree. Um, when I'm being eaten, I'm always a bit like, 
I prefer us to both be enjoying something like let's mm-hmm. 69 this mm-hmm. or let's um let's get to the sex so that we're mm-hmm. both and yeah like I, I never yeah I don't really it's been a while since I've been in a relationship right mm-hmm. <laughs> but and but, that's another <laughs> whole different thing about sex in a relationship yeah. is a whole different thing it's different um but it's been a while since I've been in a in a dynamic where I can regularly have sex and experiment with the person and and develop um, learn teach learn teach exactly um but usually like you know over the last couple of years whenever anyone's going down on me it's sort of like I'll enjoy it but I don't like I don't usually. You're waiting to, for it to end. <laughs> I'm kind of like, all right, that was a good, good, like five points. Let's move it to the next stage. Like mm. I, I usually, um, but in a relationship, it's different because it might be like, all right, you're just gonna eat me today, okay? But usually, I want sex. Like usually, I want penetrative sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, it depends on the person for sure. Yeah, it's like if I've got the dick there, why not? Why have not it inside use it? Me? <laughs> <laughs> why not fucking use it like i can like yes a tongue is different to my hands but like mm, yeah i'd prefer to be enjoying their body mm-hmm. at the same physically time. being connected yeah not, it's nice yeah like just having their their like the sex organ mm. also being stimulated simultaneously mm-hmm. yeah but you need to i uh, personally i think that if you find a person that you're comfortable with doing this then it's fine but a lot of people first have really bad rhythm for, for some reason i don't know yeah y- have you like have you had sex with somebody that when you try to when you try to penetrate they mm. try to to move away and when you try to move out they try to come close when you're yeah when so you're at different yeah so it's like we're both moving in the same direction nothing is gonna happen here <laughs> You know what I mean? It doesn't work. Like, how do you not, you know? How You're do you never not... going to procreate like this. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like you, let's say you, you like, you connect with the person, right? You put yeah. your dick in or like yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Or you get penetrated. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you start <laughs> connectedly moving. That doesn't with, work. It needs to go in and out somehow. It needs to go in and out. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's it's not, I mean, grinding is fun, right? If you sure. know how to do it properly. Sure. It's fun. Yes. But if you can't. Then and the person is not like flexible that way and they're also doing it very out of like sync it's just like the, the thing is there needs to be chemistry <laughs> like, yeah. I think there's like to get to the point where you're fucking someone there needs to be a basic level of um, energetic agreement and so hopefully by the time you're fucking that, that that's kind of already been sorted out mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. like your attraction to someone um, will dictate how that like it's not dictate. often that you dictate <laughs> yeah uh well well, often like you're not gonna end up it's not often i think that you end up fucking someone where you've got absolutely zero physical attraction to connection like like yeah physical chemistry um rhythm alignment Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like very rarely is everything feeling super good and then you fucking you're like (laughs) oh this doesn't work that hasn't happened to you not really like Like usually sex gets like when, when I really like someone, usually the sex will just get better and better. Mm -hmm. The first couple of times might be a bit like, Oh, he came really quickly (laughs) or like, or like, yeah, I didn't even get a chance to orgasm or, Mm -hmm. you know, like we're we're learning each other and then it gets better and better. Hmm? Do they stop when they come? Do they stop? Sometimes. Yeah. And so they finish their stuff. You're not like, Oh, (laughs) have you had that? Yeah. That's wild. Many times. Damn, man. I don't know. Or I'll be like, or, you know, and there's also a large part of my life where alcohol was pretty much always around when I... Stuff was happening. Yeah, exactly. So it would be like, what, did I even remember it? <laughs> oh, sh- that... Damn, dude. This is what I mean. Like, my tongue never disappoints. My mouth never disappoints. If something happens and, like, maybe I'm too excited or whatever, mm. I'm breathing too quickly, whatever it is, mm. right? I come fast. This happens. Mm-hmm. What I'm not gonna be like out here being like, yeah, fucking, I pump two hours. I'm fucking stupid. I pump no. two hours. Yeah. No, no you know no. it happens to me too. Yeah. But the thing is that for some reason, homeboy downstairs always stays in action. Nice. Regardless if <laughs> if uh, if I come early or not, I yeah. can be like, wait, switch up the stuff, but yeah. do it like smoothly, eat it out, <laughs> so on and so forth. Right. It's not like, ooh, I've come. Wait for a second yeah. and then do other shit. You did your white man voice there. <laughs> ooh, I came. It's <laughs> my white man voice. <laughs> Hey, I have half white fucking It's a white boy moment, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, wait. <laughs> 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 it's so untactical, though. And I've heard people have this situation yeah, yeah. where it's like they do stuff, they do stuff, and the guy's just like, uh, wait. 
Yeah, yeah. When? When did you? Anyway, I'm very physical when I do the stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> my, my my mouth never disappoints, right? So, so if you come, then you will if eat. If I come, I will eat out yeah. and I will do the stuff. Then she comes. Then I'm like, you want to continue? You want, you know? Or like I keep doing whatever we are doing. Mm-hmm. And if I feel like she keep wants to, to explore more or mm-hmm. she wants to do more, then we do more. If I feel like she's kind of like getting cold after she getting she cold. that's great after she after she like came she yeah. or like getting cold is like a weird thing to say but like if she no, no, feels but I like it. Like, slightly less into what we're doing yeah then i understand okay that's enough for her yeah it's all good yeah now we can watch a movie we can yeah. cook i cook a lot yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> there you go you're, you're, some, it's a great advertisement for, can make some you're not available so. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not available motherfuckers but i am i am uh, a, a people pleaser you're more people. or less Ryan, I think, I don't know. I think I am too. I'm trying to become, I like, I, I've realized in the last, um, like by doing this podcast as well, like, uh, and just you know, getting older that, um, sexually I'm, I prefer to be a bit submissive, mm-hmm. which is quite a, that's fine. It's interesting. Like I never, you know, a lot of people would put me on this kind of pedestal of like, oh, you're a dominant, you know, crazy bitch, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you talk you? crazy stuff on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but even like before comedy, it was like, um, I remember my, my ex-husband, like, yeah, he, he really had me in this, put me in this like uh place where you didn't want to be. Yeah. He really <laughs> thought I was this like dominant, you know, like I would dominate and, um, tell other women what to do in orgies and stuff like that and it's like you had orgies I, with your husband yeah uh how much people uh the most oh like 50 50 people <laughs> orgies you've been in a 50 people orgy yes but not 50 people doing stuff to you not just in me. general there's just like general 50 people 50 in people, there yeah all right yeah. okay i mean to two of those and then mm. like um and the most number of people i had sex with were like was like five mm. um at the same time uh yeah like More five on a bed like all together mm-hmm. like not necessarily all touching at the same time but yeah, like, yeah yeah but like five stuff is happening around you yeah. with five people yeah mm. but like yeah, bigger than that actually but like no five people that i actually had sex with in one party. In one yeah. space yeah yeah um how is that how does that feel it's um it's fun it's pretty exhausting it's 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 exciting it's very stimulate like it's there's a lot you're processing a lot it's like there's it's so like, many things happening like, at the same time it's like like drug sex like it's as in like sex on steroids it's so much <laughs> there's so much stimulus stimulation going on it's like whoa like after time I, up. yeah <laughs> i need really, to it <laughs> really like i yeah the last the last one that i went to um was uh i was single not with my i'd left my husband and um and i went by myself and it was when i five people and i got home after that and i was just like I was buzzing. Like I was, I, I couldn't, I was, it was crazy what it had done to me chem- chemically. Um, you felt your body all, all over. It was of. really, yeah. And I, and it was like, I don't know. It was something coming close to like heart attack level of excitement. <laughs> it was very, I was really uh, full, full body stimulated. Like maybe pleasure, over proper sti- pleasure. Yeah. but Or like, is it too much? It, I don't know. It was getting close to the point of too much. It was like, there was just so much. Yeah. It was also, I had my brother's wedding that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brother got married. And then the day after was my best friend's wedding. Oh, wow. And my dad had come to visit and he didn't come to my wedding, <laughs> but he'd come to visit. And so it was the first time I'd seen my dad in like uh, years. And then... Um, you went that night to an orgy? So you yeah. see your dad, you're like, what's up, dad? I'm yeah, going to I left orgy. my dad. That, yeah, we had <laughs> drinks after my brother's wedding. And I was like, all right, I got a party to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> yeah. I fuck this wedding, man. Well, it was like, you know what? My best friend and my brother are celebrating like committed love. I've just left my my husband and there's an orgy. The last last. Oh, you like, just left your husband. Yeah, I'd left my oh. well, I'd left my husband like f- three months before that. OK, so I was so ready for situations. You see some people getting married and stuff. You're like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, it was like I need I need to. I need something to help me deal with um, the fact that I'm going to be supporting these people that I love uh, entering marriage. I've just had my dream of a happy married life d- destroyed. And uh, and how am I going to deal with that? I'm going to and I'm going to see my dad for the first time in okay. years. I'm going to go to an orgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to one, man. Yeah, they're pretty wild. They're pretty wild. But they're, yeah, there's some high quality ones. I'm looking forward to maybe finding another high quality one in, in Germany, but I haven't done the research yet. And mm. then COVID hit. Motherfucking COVID, man. Motherfucking COVID. But let's wrap this up because I... Let's do this. Yeah. So do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, as always, I am trying to do things, forcing myself to do it because I know it would be nice if 
it comes out. I have a comedy special that I'm editing. Yeah. Um, that is all footage from the first two years of a comedian's life. Great. Obviously, it's Great. all from open mics or some type of like special show kind of thing. But it's wh what are we talking about? Berlin is always open mics, regardless yeah. of how special the show is and how. Oh, there's, some sh there's some showcases. There's some showcases that you get some type of pay that and you maybe get like 15 minutes but it's still kind of open mic -y. it's still it's open mic it's new yeah that's why it's a small scene it's a small compared scene compared to the UK and the, the States the bigger one but the yeah. thing is that we always have like wonderful crowds regardless of that yeah. I'm trying to make a special what's it called open mic special open mic special and yeah. you are on Instagram you are the Dio Lego Toy D-E-O L-E-G-O T-O-Y <laughs> Dio Lego Toy And then you've also got a Facebook page. Yes. And... Dio Katunga. Dio K A T U N G A Katunga. Katunga! <laughs> Sick. <laughs> um, all right. It has been a pleasure. Um, guys, uh, follow me on uh, on all the things if you haven't already, guys. AF Barros. And uh, that has been Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Skrr, skrr. Thanks for having me. We went all types of places. We did. It was, <laughs> it was great. Sorry for being so mentally scattered. Don't say that was amazing. I'm going to stop it now. Bye.